Entertainment down to the wire when Clemson and Virginia Tech take the floor in men's basketball tonight. Promises to have no shortage of theatrics in an important early conference game here at a sold out Castle Coliseum. Good evening for Blacksburg, Kevin Brown and Debbie Antonelli. These teams have played in tight games down to the wire year after year. And this is incredibly important because the loser of this game drops three in a row. Yeah, this is a quad one opportunity for both, and they desperately need that on their resume right now. So this game's important. Virginia Tech hasn't lost at home all season, and the number 21 team in the country doesn't want to go one and three in the ACC. No. And for Clemson, it's easy. You lean on P.J. Hall. You just saw he's part of the top 25 Wooden Award list in the midseason rankings, only behind R.J. Davis in scoring in the ACC. P.J. Hall is an All-American candidate, an ACC Player of the Year candidate, and he needs to have a big game. Brad Brownell can move him all over the floor. He can have impact on the offensive end in multiple levels of their offense. And Lynn Kidd, one of the most improved players in the ACC. Look at his numbers from his freshman year at Clemson into the portal, and he's leading the league in field goal percentage. He can score left and right around the bucket, and he's long and athletic on the defensive end. Two players that came in the same class at Clemson. P.J. Hall singing Enter Sandman to himself at the center circle, ready for the tip. He seems fired up for this game, and he wins the tip dramatically, knocking it back to Clemson's Chase Hunter. 11-3, this Clemson team, a gauntlet of an on-conference schedule. They survived, but they've dropped two in a row to Miami and UNC, and they will start with the ball in Blacksburg. There is Hunter, the fifth-year guard. Man-to-man -man defense, and one of the matchups to keep your eye on are the two best three-point shooters in the league, and Hunter Couture and Joe Girard. That'll be a matchup to keep your eye on. They're guarding each other. First basket is Ian Shefflins, another one of the most improved players in the league, averaging 9 and 10 as he worms inside Robbie Barron, who, along with MJ Collins, is back in that starting five of Virginia Tech. The mainstays, Kador, Padula, and Kidd. It's Collins hanging and missing the first shot. Chauncey Wiggins cleans it up for Clemson. One of the things that most teams try to do is take advantage of Joe Girard on the defensive end. They try to run offense at him and make him move his feet and defend. Starting five for Clemson, a very experienced backcourt, Girard and Hunter, Wiggins, Hall, and then Shefflin, who's got the first two buckets, the 6'8 junior from Loganville, Georgia. No surprise to see Clemson start their offense from the inside out. They've got to build it on the interior. They've got the size and the length on the front line as an advantage to start the game. Padula bangs in a three. Coming off a career high, tying 26. Padula and Couture, both big time shooters, will need to be that for Virginia Tech tonight. Here is Hall being guarded by Kidd. Chase Hunter a pull up. And Clemson starts three for three on the road. Yeah, I think Chase Hunter is one of the reasons why Clemson is playing so well and needs to play big on the road. Your guards can dictate on the road how you run the tempo of your team and manage your team, and he's done a good job of that all season so far. Virginia Tech, the eighth best offensive team in the ACC by adjusted efficiency. They get it inside to Kidd. He scores over his former teammate. And keep an eye on that matchup as well. Clemson elects to, to play straight up on the interior, not bring a double. This Clemson team, the fourth best offense in the ACC. Very good shooting team, third best field goal percentage, third best team from three, as P.J. Hall misses a three, the first missed shot of the game for the Tigers, and Padula brings it up the floor for the Hokies. Sean Padula crossing Hunter, lost it on the way up. Kidd is there to retrieve it, and Lynn Kidd, who scored just two points Saturday in Tallahassee has four in the last two possessions. Yeah, season low for him. He has been a, an excellent, consistent scorer for them all season long. Try to get it into Shefflin again, who's got two early baskets. Junior backing down Bear in the Northwestern transfer. Shefflin gets to the right hand, too strong off the glass, and Barron seals him for the board. Virginia Tech team that lost 77-74 Saturday at Florida State. They got a big performance from this young man, though, Padula, and the Hokies, after missing their first shot, have hit four straight. After a slow start handling the ball for 
Virginia Tech against Florida State. He came on late and made some shots, and he's very good at inverting to the block. That's a big part of the offense for him. He will score on a clear out that way. Off the shot fake, Hunter lost the dribble with Padula on him. Six to shoot for the Syracuse transfer, Joe Girard. Big three-point shooter, weaves into the lane, finds an open Shep land, and he buries it from deep. Well, we talked about Lynn Kidd being one of the most improved players in the league. Shefflin's on that list as well. He is a 57% three-point shooter. That's his ninth triple of the season. That matches Clemson's total in the game Saturday against North Carolina. They were one for 18. That one left short by Padula. Nobody really chased it for Clemson. So Barron has the offensive rebound, and then Barron is rewarded. I love a clean game, and that's what we got so far. Both teams making shots, both teams getting into their offense. Multiple players scoring for both clubs. That's the first turnover of the game after a combined nine for 13 start. Virginia Tech. Second week of January, but it is never too early to set the stakes. And for Virginia Tech, the stakes are high. They're not in the first four out. They're not in the next four out. They're considered right now by Jewel Lenardi. That means they need a few more wins to get into serious bracket consideration. Clemson, a five seed. The big difference last year did between Clemson, uh, their non-conference schedule. Very weak last season. They missed the tournament despite 23 wins. And even with a one and two start, they're in a very good shape right now, early in January. I mean, the greatest snub of the tournament was going 14 and six in the league and not getting in. Robbie Barron with a basket. Virginia Tech is six for eight. Clemson four for six. It has been a breathtaking offensive start. Mike Young on an ATO, dialing it up over there. That was a beautifully executed play. Here's Chauncey Wiggins, 6'11", sophomore. Gets it in the hall, who is yet to score. That remains the case, but Sheflin grabs it. Blocked by Kent from behind. A rare blocked shot for Virginia Tech, which runs the floor with Padula. And he drains a three, his second of the game. Well, Sean Padula needed a great start. And before the game, I talked to him. I thought he was set for a big game, and he said, I need one. He was locked in early. He has scored or assisted on five of Virginia Tech's seven made baskets. And Barron, another good rebound. He's fouled by Shefflin. Robbie Barron, back in the starting lineup today, has given good minutes for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is a team blocks three shots a game. Right here, they do a great job in Lynn Kidd getting out on a break. When you block shots into your transition game, you get shots like this. It's hard to match up when you're playing downhill off a block shot, and that's exactly what Virginia Tech was able to do. You did ask Lynn Kidd before the game, do they want you to be a shot blocker? And now we know the he answer. Said, well, he's 6'10", <laughs> he's long and athletic around the rim. I don't think Coach Young wants him to be, take a risky uh, uh, get in foul trouble. Well, Nigel Poteet is in the game along with Makai Long for the first time for Tech. It's on a 14-3 run. Here's Collins. Two long and a three. And that ball out of bounds off of Long. Our officials today, by the way, Ted Valentine, Tim Clockerty, and Tommy Morrissey. There is the aforementioned Mike Young. Fantastic coach at his fifth year at Virginia Tech. A couple of NCAA tournaments to start. Now the Hokies last year did not make it 19 and 15, 8 and 12 in the league. That's Dylan Hunter. Off the bench for a three. The younger brother of Chase hits his seventh three of the year. I mean, when both these teams move the ball, go from good to great from their shot selection, they're really tough to beat. This another three. Makai Long, who has not hit one this season. Offensive rebound for Pote, a hard hit on the floor. That's the first foul against P.J. Hall who has gotten himself fouled out of the last two games. So free throws coming for the senior Poteet, Rice transfer. Poteet with that power game, that weak side rebound. You're 15 at Clemson for Brad Brown. Is it the most wins ever at Clemson by 75? 
little bit of pressure to get back to the NCAA tournament. He's made it three times. A lot of folks thought he should have been there last year. This is a Clemson team that, again, looks very well positioned to return, as we just showed you a five seed right now in the projected bracket. Well, their depth has been a little bit affected with out Alex Hemingway, who's still out with injury. Jack Clark still out with injury. Certainly has affected the rotations, but they've had time to adjust. The Hunter brothers, Chase and Dylan, both on the floor right now. Boz Light is in the game, giving Hall a breather. That ball knocked out of bounds, 11 to shoot for Clemson, which also has R.J. Godfrey on the floor. They'll go nine deep, but Josh Beadle and Light don't play much, so it's really a core seven-man rotation right now with the injuries for Clemson. Gerard for to shoot. It's going to have to be Defense. Joe Gerard. He didn't realize it. And he got it up just in time and missed it. Hunter Couture is known as a three-point shooter, but any coach in the league would tell you he's one of their lockdown defenders. Hasn't taken a shot yet tonight, and he will not there as he turns it over. Virginia Tech a much better team defensively this year. They were 139th in the country in adjusted efficiency last year. They're up to 64th. Problem is their offense has taken a little bit of a dip. Well, you know, I think they've turned the ball over more than what Mike Young's teams are typically do. And certainly in the losses they've suffered, they've turned the ball over more than they've had assists, and that's not a number that he likes. Hunter can't connect. Clemson's got a little cold. It's a three-level defense, Kevin. You know, it's ball pressure, it's the ability to rotate, and then that rim protection is one of the things that they are working on, and that's where Lynn Kidd can come in and definitely make a difference. Back to Poteet. On the grad transfer, Lida. And Poteet cannot spiral it in. Clemson just two for nine since a three for three start. Hunter with a good find. That's R.J. Godfrey, the sophomore, seven-point-per-game scorer off the bench. I mean, the acceleration off the cuts and the movement without the ball creates so much space and opportunity. That's a great jump, dump-down pass. Tyler Nickel commits his first foul off the bench. It's Edgar Nickel is fouled by Boz Lida. A four-point lead for the Hokies here in Blacksburg. Kevin, when you turn a corner like this, you fall. Nice. It's just nope. bottle of water. Things have changed this season for Mike. Nothing. Water. And uh, he's looking good. He's dropped about, well, I don't know. He probably doesn't want us to know, tell everybody how much <laughs> weight he's lost. But he's lost a lot of weight, and he's working out, and he's taking care of himself, and he's gearing up for the postseason. There's a three missed in the corner by... Brandon Rexstad of the rebound down to Clemson. Unusual not to see Coach Young with the popcorn before the game. We probably will have to get some before it's over because I think everybody <laughs> sitting to our right and left has popcorn right now. And it was great. That was his thing, and he's not doing it anymore, and it's pretty cool. Nice little water koozie as well. Make sure you don't get the hands too cold while coaching. Don't sweat the details. You know, the one thing about Mike Young that I respect and appreciate so much because he's such a great teacher is he has incredible play recall. Hmm. He can tell you what happened in a game with his Hokies three years ago in the second half of a mid-January game. He can recall plays like that. It's phenomenal. I don't know anyone else that can do that. You Kinda could like do that? That's like Tiger Woods remembering every one of his golf yeah. shots. You didn't have that ability as a player? Uh, not that kind of recall. <laughs> Do you recall specific broadcasts? Only when legends like you, Kevin. Well, there you go. So you recalled all of our previous broadcasts, we were saying. <laughs> all zero of them. Here's Nickel. And Virginia Tech, which had been called from three, gets a triple from Nickel, the North Carolina transfer. Foul, by the way, was the second against Boz Lida. P.J. Hall has returned for Clemson, which was leading early but finds itself down seven. I mean, Tyler Nickel, the transfer from North Carolina, sets his feet off the screen immediately into his jump shot. It's a beautiful-looking jump shot. And, you know, uh, I mean, he's like one of the great all-time scorers in the history of Virginia. Yeah. He's the all-time leading scorer. And, and it's... A, it's a quite a list. A laundry list. Who's who of great Virginia high school players. Lonzo Mourning, Moses Malone, Allen Iverson among them. J.J. Redick. 
Brent Hill on there as well. Mac McClung was second, and that's the company that Tyler Nickel keeps. There's a three for Chase Hunter, the redshirt senior. Just a 30% three-point shooter for Clemson. Drills it. Tigers three for five from deep. Hokies are four for eight. The freshman Rex Steiner leans in and pumps home a basket. Rex Steiner didn't play in the last game against Florida State. Hall for three. And there, the first bucket of the game for P.J. Hall, nearly halfway through the first. You know, Kevin, four of the last six games, P.J. has taken more threes than free throws. And I asked Brad, Brad Brownell about it today. He's not worried about it. It's just the versatility of P.J.'s game and his ability to pull away from the bucket, pull bigs away, open up driving lanes. There's a lot that can happen that's good for Clemson when he sticks triples. 35% from out there, Hall. Here's Kidd. Missed the mid-range shot. It's cleaned up by Long. Virginia Tech shooting at 59% from the field early on. And the Hokies with a lead at home. Building where they have not lost this season, but their best win, probably Vermont. This is a big step up in competition. As Hall's miss three is back tapped. And collected by Dylan Hunter off the tap by Chase Hunter. Shot clock did not reset, so Ted Valentine stops playing. Actually, it did, and it or the over shot reset. clock re they did correct themselves, but the timing Second wouldn't be exactly right. I think Ted Valentine wants to make sure they put. Second in the Hokies with zero. Hunter Controller and three. Oh, he's calling it a change of possession. No. They reset the whole shot clock. Yeah, I that thought that was an offensive rebound, which would have been 20. But right. the ball did go all the way into the backcourt. So it is deemed a possession change. And instead of 18, it's a nearly full 28 to shoot for Clemson. I'm not sure it's the possession change. I think it's, it's that the, the ball court. went into the backcourt, Kevin. It's a lot of time for Gerard to work with. He has not scored yet in the game. Clemson's second leading scorer. Look at the ball pressure by Virginia Tech. Nickel off the steal. Nickel flushes. I was at practice yesterday for Virginia Tech. And these guys started off the practice with a wall up drill and then a hustle drill. When you start practice like that and you got everybody locked in, I mean, it was impressive the amount of intensity that Mike Young's team brought to practice yesterday. Padula hits the deck and still that's, active hands. Couture's on the floor. That's the kind of plays I'm talking about. Padula sets up Nickel. He drills it. Tyler Nickel. With a spark off the bench, eight points on three shots, and the largest Hokie lead. Eastern North Carolina off to an impressive start, hosting Syracuse, Kentucky at Texas A&M, struggling Aggies team, coached by former Hokies head man Buzz Williams, and then Arkansas, Florida, starting our day off with a triple header beginning at noon Eastern on ESPN. Buzz had a tough one last night. It was like a two-point game with four minutes to go, and, and Bruce Pearl's Auburn team can flat out fill it up. A&M, a team that a lot of folks thought was a top two team in the SEC, nine and six, 0 and two in the league. Right now, the largest lead for Virginia Tech, and Chase Hunter will try to cut into that at Plus the line. Virginia Tech's 31, Robbie Barron. Unusual first game first right now. Joe Girard has not scored. B.J. Hall only has three. On the other side for Virginia Tech, Hunter Couture, their second leading scorer, hasn't even taken a shot, but the Hokies' other guys have done more than the Tigers. You know, when you watch Hunter, I'm not sure there's anybody that accelerates off exit cuts and scoring cuts better than he does, but if you went time of possession in this first half so far, I don't think he's had many touches. Clemson has done a really good job on him. Chase Hunter, a double-figure scorer, 10 of 14 games this season, is up to seven points early. Snaps a 7-0 Hokies run. Trying to get Couture in touch right now, and he is being absolutely locked up with Wiggins. And he's got a five-second call, Tim Clockerty, as Couture asks him, how about a foul there, wing to wing? I mean, watch this right here. This is what I'm talking about. Like, this is a foul. He has locked up Hunter Couture, and he is not letting him move. 
he's displacing his cut. And he, Hunter Couture turns around to Tim Clockerty and says, hey man, check me out over here. He's already eight inches shorter than his defender Wiggins. Getting manhandled as well, but it ended up as a Virginia Tech turnover. Hall steps out, strokes his second three, and Clemson, after a one for 18 three-point effort on Saturday, is five for eight. 6'11", Barry and triples for the Tigers. Padula. Barron wraps it around to Couture. A couple of extra passes. Padula from Nickel, and there's a late whistle and a foul as Padula got crunched in front of the Clemson bench. P.J. Hall is over there, and that's the second foul on Hall. See, now this is not a smart play by P.J. He is late on the three-point shooter, and he's out of control off balance, and he doesn't give Padula time or space to really come down. That's two fouls on P.J. That's one he, can, he has to avoid. You know, we talked to Brad Brownell about the two-foul rule with P.J. today, right? Yep. Because he's fouled out of the last two games. And R.J. Godfrey will place him now. So this is perhaps a line of demarcation. I think it was 30-25 when Hall commits the foul. We'll see if he returns in the first half. He's got a couple of threes, but only six. Gerard, their second leading scorer, with nothing. And who is going to answer the bell here for Clemson after the free throws by Padula? I think Gerard's got to keep working. Foul away for the ball. That's the third against That's Virginia Tech. Correction. Virginia Tech's 31, Robbie Barron. Robbie Barron picks up his second. 13. And Barron will take a seat. Kai Long replaces him. Barron with two of the Hokies' three fouls. And there's an offensive foul. I mean, R.J. Godfrey just runs over Sean Padula. Coach Brownell's looking at R.J. going, what are you doing? But his dad was an NFL linebacker. <laughs> his brother's a, a linebacker. Yeah, brother Grant of Kentucky. How do you think they would have liked that form? <laughs> what say? Maybe a little high on the tackle. Kid spinning. Got to the right hand beautifully. Yeah, he put up a lot of extra shots today, did Lynn Kidd, before practice, working on his post moves, his counters, being able to go over left and right shoulder. Hunter had Godfrey open for a moment, didn't see him flashing. Gerard still has not really impacted this game. Hunter, Gerard set him up. Hunter missed the three. Shefflin taps it to Makai Long. Another big moment on the run out for Pedula. His floater is off the rim. Well, Clemson can't get anything in transition either. I mean, Virginia Tech's doing a good job loading up. Gerard leans into Couture, and he'll get a two-shot foul out of it to the dismay of the fans in Chicago Maroon and Burn Arch. Is this two or a three? I think two. With Tommy Morrissey signaling two. That's offense-initiated oh. contact. I wouldn't like that one if I were Mike Young either. They just showed that it on the no video call. board either. Nobody in here likes it. So Couture picks it up. I mean, it's, it's not a cylinder violation if somebody leans into you. No. So, that's right. Wasn't reviewed either. It looked like it might have been a three. And now Ted Valentine's going to stop playing and bring the officials together. I think they're making sure. Was it a two or a three, right? They didn't, you're right, they didn't review it. Yeah, it's a three. Well, that's what we thought. Yeah, and the officials are now reviewing it. Interestingly, reviewing it after the two scheduled free throws were taken. 
So Joe Girard, who's 40 of 44 from the free throw line, should get one more. It gives a chance to talk about Joe Girard for a second. I mean, he's down more than 12 pounds. His conditioning at a peak right now. And that's clearly a three, so there should be one more free throw coming. You saw him for four years at Syracuse. What's impressed you most about his adaptation to Clemson? I think his ability to guard in the scheming defensively that Brad Brownell demands. I mean, it's not an easy defensive system. It's not just stay between your man and the ball. You know, you got to be able to understand under overhead strap, ice jam, switch, and all the different variations of ball screen coverage, including drop, which is eight. Eight different ball screen coverages you have to understand in Brad Brownell's system. I think he's done a really good job. I asked him about it today. He said that's part of the reason why he wanted to come to Clemson is he knew that Brad Brownell was a defensive-oriented coach and playing man versus the zone that he lived in with Jim Beheim is a, a much different, in some ways, defensive look. You could argue, you know, that the 3-2 is man-to-man -man in your area, but there's a lot of different principles about man-to-man -man defense versus zone. We've backed down to seven after Gerard hits all three. Here's Couture. Hasn't impacted the game much offensively, but he sets up Nickel. Couture's got his first assist, and Tyler Nickel has 11 points on four shots. I'll tell you what, Wiggins has done a good job on Couture because he's uh, locking trail off that pin down action, and that's a lot of length on that curl for Hunter. Gerard bounce feed for Godfrey into the body of Long, and R.J. Godfrey finishes at the rim. He's tough. I mean, the muscle on the front line of Shefflin and Godfrey is tough right now. Clemson is not going to be outbigged by many teams this year. Nickel, his first miss. Hunter does not have numbers. Mouse in the house. The 6'11 Wiggins over the 6'1 Badula. Yeah. That's why you push in transition, so you can immediately get the mismatch. Clemson recognized it right away. They played good D, rebounded, and they sprinted the floor. You force those matchups when you sprint. Long, and Nickel open for three to his right, takes it in and said, tries to tap in his own miss and can't. Clemson five for its last seven from the field. Gerard's been calling for the whole way. Instead, Wiggins line drives out a three and kids got the rebound. See, this is where you miss P.J. Hall in that trail position to be able to shoot the three. Padula wraps it around. Nickel, another good look. His fourth three of the first half. Go ahead, Tyler Nickel, and shoot till your arm falls off. And when Sean Padula thinks pass first and moves the ball, this is a very dangerous Virginia Tech offense. Tyler Nickel has tied a season high in about 10 minutes off the bench. He's two away from his career high, by the way. And his team has it again as long at it's stripped. Gerard's on the deck, bodies all over, and a foul will be called against Makai Long. Diving over the top of R.J. Godfrey, but more great hustle on both sides for Virginia Tech. The Hokies in control of the first half at home. Goes first half. I mean, that is a tough kid right there, Hunter Couture. Scary moment. MJ Collins is back on the floor for Tech. PJ Hall is in the game right now with two fouls for Clemson. They bring the double. Pull up shot is drilled. Chauncey Wiggins with a couple of good looking shots here. The 6 11 sophomore from Grayson, and Clemson's back within seven. Without Couture on the floor defensively for Virginia Tech, this could open some things up for Joe Girard. Loki's best perimeter defender, we imagine, will not return for the first half. Padula jacks up a deep one. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's a heat check for sure, because that's one of those shots where you're Mike Young going, no. And then, yes. An eight for 13 start from deep for Virginia Tech, matching its largest lead at 10. Gerard, no Couture in the game, then, exactly. but he got free. I mean, you know Joe Gerard was waiting for an opportunity. And when you're a shooter and you've got somebody that is in your grill the whole game and they step aside, 
to next time down the floor, you're looking for some space. Let's see if MJ Collins closes him off a little more next time. Padula goes around Hall, had to play a little carefully with the two fouls. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one of the best first halves of basketball Sean Padula has played. Timeout Clemson will be back in 30. So correction, the timeout was taken by Virginia Tech. They're use it or lose it timeout. Hokies leading by nine, and Sean Padula with a first half 16. I mean, the number you look at with Padula is assist turnover ratio. He's had 10 turnovers in the last two games combined. He only has one right now. And he is effective shooting it, inverting to the block, and then playing off the bounce when he's got a straight line drive. He has to be careful, though, not to over-penetrate. Hunter, the Padula went for the shot fake there. Hunter left it short. And off the Mackay Long rebound, here is Padula, who sprained his foot against Louisville. It's been a lot healthier the last couple of games. Nickel gets the shooter's bounce and ties a career high with 16 in the first half. I mean, he reads the D perfectly. Coming off that pin down, he curls into the lane. He reads the second level. Nice floater. Nickel and Padula each with 16. Virginia Tech nearly with a half, 100 in the first half, and they're about to get 100. Long will take it, and Long is undercut dangerously oh. wow. after the assist by Padula. Long got undercut by Chase Hunter and went crashing to the floor. Good to see him up on his feet. Padula would like a review, and You'd imagine there will be there, given the severity of that fall. I'm, I don't think Hunter undercut him. I think he tried to hang on to the rim. He just lost his, just, he just slipped, his hands looked like they slipped off the rim. That's a hard fall. Thankfully, he got back up. And yeah, the officials will take a look, but didn't seem like there was anything from Hunter there. Now Kai Long will take a seat. They've gotten some good minutes from him, though, the Old Dominion transfer, and they were looking for some more out of Makai Long. Talked to Mike Young before the game, said, who needs to be good today? He mentioned Long, he mentioned Tyler Nickel, Robbie Barron, MJ Collins. They've gotten really positive contributions from all those players outside of the big three of Padula, Couture, and Kidd. I, mean, I think the officials are over there taking a look at it, but I don't think they're going to come away with anything. It, you know, he's an airborne shooter. There is an airborne shooter rule. There is a safety factor here, but I don't think Chase Hunter really clipped him. Tommy Morrissey will give us an explanation. So the word we got was purely his momentum right. there, Long's momentum, so no flagrant foul. Hey, tonight, 10 Eastern ESPN, the second game of our NBA doubleheader, Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets taking on the Jazz in Utah. NBA Wednesday presented by State Farm. ESPN is streaming live on the ESPN app. Virginia Tech, 10 assists on 19 makes, only four turnovers and the largest lead of 13. Two teams that are trying to snap two game losing streaks. Hall is back off the floor right now for Clemson, by the way, with two fouls. Godfrey with a strong drive and score. I mean, ball reversal twice. They get three sides of the floor. And I know Brad Brown now has a package with Joe Girard on the top of the floor running the point. And they're going to that right now. Clemson's shooting at 52, 50, 100 right now. Field goes threes, free throws, but they haven't been able to defend. They'll get a steal here. Final minute of the half. They'll work it inside to Shefflin, who had seven points early and gets his eighth and ninth there. Off turnovers or off rebounds, Padula's not going to crash the glass. He's getting back, but he's getting caught on a big in transition, and Clemson is recognizing it very quickly. Padula's in a spectacular first half. It continues. It's a mistake by Chase Hunter. You know, he leans into the screen, and Padula rejects the screen. It's 
a great play by Sean. Hunter got caught in the air. Nickel tries to throw it off Wiggins, threw it to Wiggins, and Wiggins hits a three at the buzzer. A bizarre end of the half for Virginia Tech as Nickel tried to throw it off the body of Wiggins. He bounced it inbounds and Clemson hits it 7-3 at a half to cut the lead to nine. It's a great hustle by Nickel and a good try, but right here to have the presence of time and score. That's good. A much needed three. Brilliant shooting half for both teams. Clemson 55%. Virginia Tech 65, the Hokies up by nine as we check in with the studio. Virginia Tech and taking advantage of transition. Nicola's Car got to take something away, Kevin. Got career high tying 16 right now. Padula with 19, but that bottom note you saw, Hunter Couture, we've been told, is out for the rest of the game. Couture was kicked in the head by R.J. Godfrey with about three and a half minutes to go in the first half. So Virginia Tech will not be with its second leading scorer for the season here in this second half. Lynn Kidd starts the half by being walled up yes. by P.J. Hall. Excellent job by P.J. to wall up and not foul. And a good job to try to attack him to put a third on him. Clemson a little smaller to start the half. They've got Dylan Hunter out there instead of Chauncey Wiggins. Older brother Chase threw it away off of Kidd to Padula and the Hokies with their fourth steal. Padula behind the back for Kidd. A little Overly fancy, and that's a better behind the back. Hunter, back from Hunter. A little bit of a bobble, and Clemson will settle with Shefflin. Hall the trailer. Missed a three. Robbie Barron's got the rebound. I, I mean, you usually don't see a behind the back pass. We saw three in a row. Yeah. Some of which were successful. <laughs> Tyler Nichols starts the half, and why not for Virginia Tech? That ball stripped by Hunter. Another Clemson steal. And this time, Dylan Hunter will finish his second basket. Now that's exactly what Clemson needs, is to generate extra possessions right here with their defense. What's the thinking, you imagine, behind Hunter starting the second half over Wiggins? Smaller, Clemson? quicker, better defensive lineup. So far, so good, especially with Couture off the floor. Hokie shot it at 60. 5%, 9 for 14 from three. One of their best offensive halves under Mike Young. Nickel trying to lean in. That's a tough shot. Barron touched it, and he touched it and threw it off of Hunter. So 1.3 to shoot for Virginia Tech. One of the few contested shots that Virginia Tech has taken. Clemson's locking in on D right here. This is the DNA of a Brown Brownell team. And they're inverting on the out-of-bounds play right here. See, Gerard is on nickel. You see, they're trying to give some help right here. In the corner, Barron gets a great look and misses a three. That would have really made Brad Bradell's face turn a different shade. Joe Gerard, a quiet first half. Only six points, made one field goal inside the hall. Shefflin grabs the short shot. And Shefflin with nine in that first half to lead Clemson. Gerard, guarded by Collins, leans in, couldn't get the contact or the basket. It's cleaned up by Hall, and Clemson is back within five. Now, P.J. only played 12 minutes in the first half with those two fouls. He should be good for 18 minutes here in the second. Hunter again has really caused havoc defensively in the first two and a half minutes of this half. Padula got it back, and Padula trains another three. He's five for six. He is just hot. He had 26 in the last game against Florida State. That's his season high and career high. That career high may last for all of four days at this rate. In jeopardy, that's for sure. Another shot fake by Hunter. He'll bank it in. And the elder brother, the two, Chase Hunter, the redshirt senior's got nine. Well, the Virginia Tech bench had 23 points. You can credit Tyler Nickel for coming off the bench in the first half, giving 16 of those. But he's in the lineup here to start the second half as well. Padula again, and only a second three-point miss. Clemson can make this a one-possession game with a three. Game they trailed by nine coming out of the break. Hall got Kidd in the air, drives it into Lynn Kidd, draws the first foul against Lynn Kidd. 
Watch PJ Hall working hard on the glass right here. I mean, this is extra effort and understanding where he is, uses the rim to protect against the shot blocker, and then quickly a little drag screen, enough separation. And that set right there that P.J. Hall drew a foul on, Mike Young and his staff went over and over and over in practice today with Lynn Kidd on how to hedge and recover. Kidd gets an early breather along with Barron, Long and Poteet off the bench for the Hokies. Hunter, catch and shoot, that was blocked by Long, right to Shefflin, who spins and stuffs around Paduma, and it's a four-point game. Yeah, you can see Shefflin's motor is picking up right here. The energy level for Clemson out of the locker room has been really good on the defensive end. And a fumble there, the pass from Collins to Nickel mishandled, another tech turnover. I mean, watch Shifflin right here. He rolls hard to the rim. He knows the shot is short. He's got Padula on him. High percentage finish at the rim. P.J. Hall gets a breather right before the under 16. Boz Lido will see the floor at least for a few seconds. Gerard trying to get free. Dropped off by Shefflin, and Gerard lost control. Nickel, tech in transition. Clemson got back well, and Padula was slow to return, so Virginia Tech had a four on five. And then Boz Lida commits his third foul. Good start to the half for Clemson. 8-3 spurt to get within four. Managers are the backbone of every college basketball program. Every coach points to the effort, the hustle, the extra time that those young men spend and women spend around helping the college basketball product be the best it can be. Hey, just like when Clemson, Virginia Tech's teams take the floor as both teach slams, even the managers' games are close. Even those ones go down to the wire. And appreciate you giving a shout out to, as you know, some of the hardest working people in any program. A lot of whom go on to be coaches and involved in the game in other ways as well. That's right. Off the miss layup by Josh Beadle. Here's Virginia Tech running. Virginia Tech managers were already telling me when they go to NC State, they think there should be a line on the game. <laughs> Boti breaks it, strong rebound, Shefflin. P.J. Hall still getting a little bit of an early breather. He is standing on the Clemson bench. Gerard worms around Padula, and Padula sticks with him, picks up the steal, Virginia Tech's fifth. Padula with 22, four shy of a career high. Nichols got 16 to tie a career high. Makai Long, all kinds of trouble and knocked out of bounds. 15 to shoot for the Hokies, and P.J. Hall will check back in along with Chase Hunter, along with R.J. Godfrey, and a line change for Brad Brownell. A good use of the media timeout to give P.J. a little break before the timeout, and now a couple of possessions into the next media break. Padula, that's a tough shot. A rare miss for him, grabbed by Beetle. It's, it's a rare miss, but I think they can get a better shot. Yep. All three for eight in the game, the second leading score in the ACC. Down on the block, looking for that Hunter miss. Hall tried to grab it, but Kai Long was a little stronger. Padula again. He has come crashing back to earth these last few possessions. Saturday, both these teams were in action. A basketball triple header on the ACC Network. Clemson hosting Boston College at 3 Eastern. Virginia Tech against Miami. Wuka Poplar back for the Hurricanes tonight. And then in between, Georgia Tech Duke. All those games on ACC Network and streaming on the ESPN app. Good to see Wuka Poplar, one of the great three-point shooters in the nation, back for Miami. And four players on the Wooden Award midseason top 25, including two Tar Heels. R.J. Davis, the only player with more points per game in the ACC than P.J. Hall. Remember, no Hunter Couture right now out for the game after being kicked in the head in the first half for Tech. That's a travel against Pote. Virginia Tech over its last four. A couple of turnovers here in the half. A little bit of a slower start for Mike Young's team. 
really trying to attack P.J. Hall on the defensive end, right? I mean, you're trying to get that third foul on him. Lynn Kidd replaces Poteet. And Jayden Young, the freshman, checks in for the first time for the Hokies. There he is at a Goldsboro, North Carolina, replacing Nickel. Two hunters, Beetle, Wiggins, and Hall, the five for Clemson. Hall screens for Beetle. Down the lane, Josh Beetle, left-handed. And the Richard sophomore, a three-point per game scorer, puts in his first two. Beetle on the floor for defense, so scoring is a bonus right now. Badula over dribbling it there, and Hunter touched it while he was over the line. Beetle on the floor who did a really good job on Tyler Nickel, does a terrific job of attacking the rim and scoring. Look at the hang time. Only played five minutes combined the last two games, Josh Beetle. He's played eight good minutes defensively tonight. Hokies have not scored the last 244. Get it into Kidd. Collins has Hall switched on to him. Kidd's got Wiggins, who's a lot more slender. Padula's has got a three, his sixth, and he's one shy of a career high with 25. No shot conscious at all for Sean Padula. He is moving on to the next play, and you like a confident shooter like that. Beetle again into traffic, picked up by Padula. Hokies so lethal in transition, it's long! This time, Long held on to the rim. <laughs> Hall quiets the castle as third three. Boy, did they need that. P.J. Hall, three for six outside the three-point line. Padula, left-handed, he scores it. A new career high for Sean Padula. 27 points and the distinct possibility of a 28th when we return. Sean Padula, watch him reject this, hit this triple right here. And then reject the nine for 14 overall. He's been to the free throw line. He's got seven assists, three steals. He's going back to the free throw line right here. He manages the offense. He had 26 on Saturday, 27 right now with a chance to add to that at the line. You know, the four games before Florida State, the last four before Saturday, he had 24 points total. He was. Six for 28 shooting. A sprained foot had been lingering, right. hurt it against Louisville, hurt it in practice. So he has 24 points in a four game stretch. He has 26 points, hits nine shots on Saturday, and he's got 28 and he's hit nine more today. They need every inch of it with Hunter Couture out for the rest of this game after being kicked in the head. Virginia Tech, which has led for more than 25 minutes, up by nine. Joe Girard back on the floor. He's only hit one three-pointer and only one field goal tonight. He hasn't had a lot of clean looks. They've done a really good job on him. And in that series right there, P.J. Hall slipped every screen. I think the next time down, let's look for him to pop. Hall guarding Kidd, who's trying to hand it off for Collins. Collins drives it. Gerard was all there. P.J. Hall spinning around, gets rid of it to Hunter. Not a lot of easy baskets in transition for Clemson tonight. Hall, once again, a trailing three, and Padula snatches away the rebound. Young man from Edmond, Oklahoma, who has made his mark on this program. More than a few miles away in Blacksburg, Virginia. Spinning around on Hunter. Maintains that dribble so well, and he finds Kidd. Inside long, missed it. 
Here's Beetle. Wiggins three is good. Clemson's ninth three of the game. And Wait, a couple there for Wiggins. When you push and you run hard, you flatten out the defense on the top of the floor. You take everybody to the ball. Everyone goes to the level of the ball. And the top of the floor is open. That's why the last two possessions, the trail big has had a good look from three. Medulla back for Kidd. Beetle gave him an assignment away for a second there, and Kidd missed a pretty good look. That's two shots at the rim back to back. Virginia Tech missed layups. Hunter, ball slipping off the screen. Hunter takes it strong at the rim. The follow is there by Wiggins. I like the no call. Wall up at the rim. Good follow by Clemson. Chauncey Wiggins, who was two for seven, five points Saturday, has a dozen. And a little surge here for Clemson. Five straight, back down to within four. Gerard Ampadula. Kid. Inside long, this time they don't miss at the rim. When you're guarding Sean Padula right now, you're in no help. So you are keeping him from trying to catch once he gives it up. That's exactly what Gerard was doing. So there was no help there on that curl to the rim. And Mackay Long with eight points. He's the third Hokie to hit a season high in points tonight. Gerard. Working around Collins, extra pass, Wiggins for Beadle, bounce inside, it's Gerard. Oh, Joe playing a big post game at 6-2. Every time Clemson goes side to side, gets multiple sides, they get a good look. Medulla's got Beadle on him this time. Clemson switching the looks. Feed it inside to Kinn. Back out for Collins. I mean, good dig by Chase Hunter and then recover out to the shooter. Clemson can make this a one possession game. They were down 11 at the half, and that three is bricked by Hunter, and Wiggins couldn't get to it. Jalen Young cleans up the rebound for Tech. Each team with three players ready to check in, which will be at the under eight, and that's an offensive foul drawn by Hall against his old teammate, Kidd. DJ Hall is still down. He may have been hit in an uncomfortable area. And he is going to be helped to his feet. Clemson back within four. P.J. Hall, you make the call. Other choice, P.J.'s pajamas. So question is, where does P.J. Hall slot in? And the P.J. power rankings in the last 740 may determine that. Well, you know what? I texted P.J. Carlissimo and told him that we were doing this, and he can't believe pajamas beat him. <laughs> he wanted to be number one. <laughs> I mean, P.J. Carlissimo's great. I, oh, no, my gosh. No He's disrespect. Awesome. But is anything better than a soft <laughs> pair of pajamas? Very creative. Where would you put P.J. Hall in those rankings is the question. Well, you got to put him at number one on this show. All right. He's taking a seat on the bench right now. He's gonna rest up, and probably when he checks in, he will be in for the rest of this game. The lead is four for Virginia Tech, which has led nearly the whole game. Sean Padula in a late whistle as Padula got fouled in the lane. RJ Godfrey, his second. Fourth team foul against Clemson. Fourth team foul against Clemson, RJ Godfrey second. Padula with a career high 28 will shoot two. Shooting two. I gotta believe Sean Badula feels without Hunter Couture, he's got to look to carry a heavier load offensively. Checking in the points at 24. Here is BJ Hall with 718 to go. Rex Steiner waiting to check in for Padula. First 30 point game of his college career. We'll see how brief this seat is for Sean Padula with a six point lead. Clemson's got Shefflin back on the floor. Gerard Hall of the Hunter Brothers. Gerard closed down again. Hall inside, spinning away from Poteet. 
Shefflin on the offensive glass, lobs it over Poteet. And that's part of the reason why Ian Shefflin is having a great year is because the attention, the double, big to big on PJ, Shefflin on the weak side glass, cleaning it up. He's got four offensive rebounds, Shefflin. He's tough, he's a tough compliment. Nickel got a good screen, clean look, couldn't finish. Rebound, Shefflin is seventh. I'd go right back to PJ, they know the double's coming. Let him play through the double team, he's capable. Trying to get it to him, there it is. Hall will shoot it quickly this time, well off the mark, and no offensive rebounder in the area. Switch. Nickel steps in, Nickel elevates. Nickel scores it. That's a new career high with 18. The UNC transfer in his first year in Blacksburg pushes the lead to six with six to go. Hall was calling for the ball or setting a screen. He ended up with the ball. It's Gerard. He's got a Hokies draped all over him. Lost it. Shefflin's right on the spot. Shefflin trying to jump over Barron, who is twisted over Gerard and throws it out to Collins. That was awkward. Nickel. Cash! Tyler Nickel is having a night. Shoot till your arm falls off, Tyler. He began his career at North Carolina. It appears he will. Eagles can figure it out against Tampa Bay and then UFC 297 next Saturday. ESPN ABC, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus. This is a really, really fun time in the sports calendar. NFL playoffs coming. College basketball absolutely heating up. When P.J. Hall has busted it in there for position. And that gives Chase Hunter a driving angle. Hunter tipped it out to Gerard. Five Reset. minutes to play. That's the rule, and we had it in the first half. Reset to the backcourt. Yeah. On an offensive rebound. Clemson, one for its last seven. Gerard trying to go behind his back, and Gerard rolls in a two. He's into double figures now, despite the tough shooting night. One of four Clemson players in double figures. Badula and Nickel with 16 of Virginia Tech's 22 in the second half. Badula still off the floor right now as Nickel takes it in. Nickel is fouled and can't convert, but he will shoot two. That's on Clemson's number four, Ian Shefflin. That's his third. Third foul on Ian Shefflin. So Tyler Nickel, showed you earlier, was the all-time leading scorer in the state of Virginia High School. 2,909 points at East Rockingham High School in Elkton. It was about two hours, 15 minutes northeast of Blacksburg. He was pretty strongly considering Virginia Tech out of high school, chose North Carolina, but when he put his name in the portal, visited Virginia Tech, he said he loved the energy here, he loved the authentic culture, and there is the banner at East Rockingham as he goes one for two. Barron cleans up his miss and then throws it over here. See, that's the kind of break that Clemson needs. Nickel misses, they don't get the offensive rebound. I don't know how you don't get the offensive rebound with Shefflin and Hall on the bottom mm -hmm. side of that. That, not, that won't look good on film tomorrow. Brad Brownell's gonna have a few teaching points at the end of this game. Only been one lead change in one tie. Last four meetings between these teams though, decided by a combined nine points, all four points or less. Into Hall, working on Poti. Not a clean pass and a takeaway. Padula with his fourth steal. Good help to the block by Padula. They've been bringing big to big help on the block to double team PJ Hall. This time the help came from the top. Padula and Nickel have combined for 52. And Padula, Nickel, beg your pardon, is fouled. PJ Hall's third will send us to the under four. Virginia Tech looking for a signature win here at Castle. Team came into the Castle 
It didn't go so well for them either. Third ranked NC State going down. Elizabeth Kitley with a game winner as the Hokies women's team won 63-62 over the weekend. Incredible execution by Kenny Brooks's team. Kayla King drops a dime on Kitley and Kitley finishes and Virginia Tech has won five of the last six home games against AP Top 25, and NC State's in there a couple of times. That's become a great rivalry on the women's side. Virginia Tech, of course, won the ACC tournament title last year, went to the Final Four, and that was a sold-out environment without the students here. It was crazy on yeah. Sunday in here. Congratulations to the Hokies on the ladies' side. This has become a pretty special basketball town. Really the students good. are still not back yet. Not a full house today, but a sold-out crowd with season tickets. Crowd's been engaged and enthused, and why not with the way that Tyler Nichol and Sean Padula have shot it. Nichols got the last eight for the Hokies, who have not trailed since 6-5 and lead by 10. Clemson needs a heck of a late surge. Hall's miss is rebounded by who else but Shefflin and a chance for an old-fashioned three. Ian Shefflin, nine rebounds. Hall with a great look. You can see a sense of urgency right here on Clemson. I thought P.J. Hur you know, hurried that shot. He was wide open. Look for a little full court pressure maybe coming off this made free throw. Shefflin didn't make it. Remember, no Hunter Couture down the stretch. He was kicked in the head on a loose ball by R.J. Godfrey in the first half, out for the game. Badula said to pick up more of the slack, got caught in the air there, passed up the long two. Nickel into Poteen with four to shoot, out of the double, extra pass, Robbie Barron. Yes, sir! Good ball movement by the Hokies. They had a little mouse in the house action with Hunter caught on the inside, and they moved the ball and found the open shooter. Clemson was a half a pass late on all that. Gerard to the basket. Joe Gerard with an offensive foul. Outside the restricted area. Checking Who both else but Padula drawing it? Established legal guarding position, both feet on the floor before the last step of Gerard. It's a good call. Here's the pressure for Clemson. Virginia Tech has struggled with pressure the last two games against Wake Forest and Florida State. They handle it easily here. Got the super length of Wiggins against Padula now, who will take the air out of the clock. Padula doesn't want to screen. That ball kicked, so put 10 more seconds on the shot clock. Virginia Tech, a team that Joe Lenardi says is only under consideration. They have a great non-conference win over Iowa State. This would be another quad one win. The Iowa State win got better last night yeah. when they knocked off Houston, the, the last undefeated team in college basketball on the men's side. Hoti poked away. Padula lets it go. I mean, the Hokies are going to have a lot more quad one, quad two opportunities here. This would be a quad one win for the moment. It would keep them undefeated at home. I would look for a backdoor cut right here, or something going backdoor to the basket by Virginia Tech, because Clemson has amped up their energy, and they're overplaying. It's been longer than a 30-second possession now because of the kickball and the reset. Padula driving it on Hall, a shot blocked. It's picked up by MJ Collins. That was about a 42-second possession, and it ended with a 13-point Virginia Tech lead. Hunter on the drive, leaves it long. And then Nickel throws it right to Gerard, who will shoot two. But time is not on Clemson's side right now. It was 78-70 with Shefflin at the free throw line. He misses, and Virginia Tech has done a nice job of pushing. 
It's a 15-6 run since Clemson had gotten within four at 68-64. Remember our triple header Saturday on ESPN begins with Syracuse, North Carolina, Kentucky A&M, Arkansas, Florida, and SEC doubleheader after that. Another outstanding day of college basketball as we move into January. ESPN and streaming on the ESPN app. Two free throws, Gerard. Clemson will set up pressure again. Darren inbounds it to Padula. He's fouled by Hunter. One and one for Sean Padula, who is six for six at the line. This is uh, a situation in the game where you miss Hunter Couture, a 91% free throw shooter, a ball handler late against pressure. Padula is a 76% free throw shooter. He is six for six in the game. And now seven for seven. Virginia Tech buoyed by Couture, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation. They're ninth at 78%. Tonight they're 85%, 11 for 13. Badula adds one more. His career high number balloons to 32. When you make the extra pass, 62% of your baskets are assisted. You don't turn it over and you make free throws. It's a good recipe for winning at home. Hunter, Clemson needs threes, and they need him quickly. That won't go. Rebound, Poteet. And what a response this is going to be to a two-game losing streak for Virginia Tech. And a quad one win for the Hokies. Another big win on their resume. We'll see Miami come into this building Saturday, go to Virginia, NC State next week. Those are all potential quad one games. Padula. Clemson ball in the minute 12. The flip side is to have Clemson, which came coming into ACC play looked like maybe the best team in the league, is about to have, barring something crazy, a three-game losing streak to Miami, North Carolina, and now Virginia Tech. Good teams, but this is a very good Clemson team, too. This is a good Clemson team. And we talked about you know, some injuries that have affected their depth. And uh, they didn't shoot the ball well tonight. Not in the second half. Just 38% from three, 18% in the second half. Another miss by Gerard. Clemson's is going to go back home, host BC and Georgia Tech. So a little bit of a lighter schedule upcoming, but a one and three start in the cards for Brad Brannell's team. And the Hokie faithful rises to its feet. Inside, Poteet punishes for the punctuation. The largest lead for Virginia Tech tonight. Wiggins misses another three. Offensive rebound to Hunter. Back out Gerard. Another miss. Tipped by Hall into the hands of Barron. And Virginia Tech can take a knee. Sean Padula, it appears, will end the game with a basketball in his hands. And there could be no more appropriate player to see this thing through. From a scoring perspective, the night of his life in college basketball. 32 points for Sean Padula. Virginia Tech remains unbeaten at home and stops Clemson by 15. Career high 32 for Sean Padula on a night where Virginia Tech did not have Hunter Couture for the second half. Consecutive games now, Sean Padula has picked up a career high. Tyler Nickel with a career high 24 as well. It was a two man show depth for the Hokies, 56 points combined between the junior and the sophomore. Yeah, I thought Sean Padula managed the tempo with the game early. He made a couple of shots. Thought he did a really good job of finding his own offense. I thought he took care of the basketball coming off of the last couple of games where he turned it over 10 times. 